Cyclone 9 began in 1999 when roommates Marshall Gobbert and Joseph Harrisy created an industrial metal music project called Defcon Sodomy. Dude, that's the line that opens the show. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Discography Discussion, episode 251, Cyclone 9, hosted by Dan Terry. Trust me, guys, it'll be fine. Jeff Kane. I was imbibing alcohol, legally. And Joseph Wren. Sometimes you just gotta be ridiculous. Thank God he's in the Falcon. Presented by DiscussMetal.com. And if the only way to use once and destroy is to find the BFG, then you are ready for this episode of discography discussion i am joe that is dan that is jeff first of all you use the bfg way more times than just once you think you're in a bad situation you know having to use the bfg you're going to be in a worse situation real quick so you better make sure you got those cells just save all the cells for the cyber demon two shots and it's down that's what the speedrunners told me well i mean in doom 2016 yes uh but in in, in the original Doom, you don't get the BFG before you fight the Cyber Demon. The best you're going to do is be able to hose him down with the plas- plasma rifle. I was going to say, just give me an RPD and a grip and I'll kill all you motherfuckers. Well, there it is. Uh, speaking of killing people, um, Cyclone 9. <laughs> Fucking killer. Super killer. I'm not saying that they that they killed anybody. This is not like a <laughs> thing. Uh, but <laughs> I mean, he didn't kill anybody either, but... <laughs> anyway, he tried to. <laughs> he tried to. Um, yeah, he just fucking sucks at it. That's all. Cyclone 9 was a recommendation to us from Kyle Driver of Kyle Driver. You should check him out on YouTube. He's awesome. And uh, he is also awesome because he is one of our beloved Patreon subscribers. I was like, pay- I almost said Patreon explorers. Like, if you if you do explore the Patreon, let, like let me Dora? know. Yeah, there's a lot. Like, Dora the back, Explorer. Back, of back, the- back. Exactly. Tall Mountain. <laughs> so we're we're very appreciative to Kyle for introducing us to this band because this all came about because I was like, I don't know if we're going to do Industrial December again because I'm just not finding bands that are really my thing. And he's like, dude, you should talk about Cyclone 9. And I was like, I don't know what that is. And he's like, well, you need, you need to check it out because it's awesome. Uh, and the best way I can describe it is like, yeah, it's like the first album, especially it's like EDM with like black metal screeching as the vocals. And I was like, oh, my God, this is it. This is what I think industrial music should sound like. <laughs> yeah, the first the first couple albums definitely have like a skinny puppy kind of feel to me. Skinny but, puppy, know. old school, nine inch nails without the guitars, literally gizmo and stripe from Gremlins 2 just invade the stage. And what you hear from now on is what the Gremlins think industrial is. And I really think it's fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's actually a name for it, too. It, what is it? Uh, it's Agrotech. You're just... Okay, the genre police are going to have to jump in on this one. Uh, Agrotech. No, you're right. It is an actual genre. Uh, <laughs> it comes from Dark Electro, which is like, that's like the big thing that Skinny Puppy started. We're one so... step closer to Combi Christ. <laughs> but yeah, the first, the first couple... You know, it are definitely uh, a different vein than what they ended up as. But I tell you what, uh, I am super pleased uh, th- that this was recommended because uh, I didn't think this was going to be as good as it ended up being. No, I was completely shocked, to be honest. Like, I, I didn't really go in knowing what to expect. And uh, this is another one of those weird things where a band starts off one way and then they go into a direction that I normally well, that I normally don't like, you know, like normally I start off liking the first couple of records and I did with this band, but then they go into like a point where it almost feels like they're pandering specifically to me. <laughs> no, because they also were pandering to me as well. So <laughs> a whole two people listening and maybe Joe. So this is this is what Jeff wanted Keckle to sound like. Yes, actually it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, if Keckle sounded like this, I uh, would have been there all fucking day. All day long and night and twice on Sunday. Well, before Jeff counts to three on Sunday, I'm going to take this time to say thank you to everyone for listening to the podcast. Thank you for listening and for subscribing. 
If you are not a subscriber, then you can find everything discography discussion at discussmetal.com. We are on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. So if you have an Amazon Echo or a Google Home, you have no excuse. Ask it to play the latest episode of the Discography Discussion podcast, and it will. We're also on Facebook and on Twitter at Discuss Metal. Be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe. It really helps us out. It lets us know you're listening. And now Dan is going to tell us all about five-star reviews. We do love our five-star reviews here on Discography Discussion. And I will tell you, if you leave us a review, we will read it on the show for the world to hear your opinion on our opinions, which is very exciting. Another thing that I like people (laughs) to do is to share the episodes. I love it when people share the episodes. And uh, I just wanted to to point out that, uh, you know, Keckle uh, shared the episode uh, where we talked all about Keckle. Uh, They said, check out the latest episode of the Discuss Metal podcast, number 247, discussing the entire Keckle's discography. You can stream online and download the entire episode. That, my friends, is how you share an episode. (laughs) Okay? So take note. Wow. Yeah, I guess I was gentle enough in my... uh slight disagreements well Keckle is to share Keckle is, is sophisticated enough to be all like oh okay so two guys are right and one guy's wrong so yeah, that's they're, fine. They're, gr- they're grown ups they they're big boys they can handle it they're so gonna write it, the next Keckle album is gonna be called like fuck Jeff the, dis- the <laughs> crucifixion of Jeff Kane yeah. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna have actually like studied you and know things about you that you never knew anybody else knew <laughs> yeah it, no, it's gonna the it's gonna, the title of the album is gonna be called a a, a spear to Jeff's ribs. <laughs> oh, I'm down for that. I'll I'll be down to provide guest vocals for that. hundred <laughs> uh, percent. Uh, over on uh, over on Discord, Lance Allegood, the King of Metal, uh, commented, "I'm halfway through this week's Bad Brains episode. Wow, thank you again. So far, it has been everything I was hoping for. By the way, HR sang Sacred Love into the phone a cappella." And the band wrote and played the song around the vocals. After carefully listening to that song for decades, I'm rather certain that he only sang the chorus once and the producer copied them as needed. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what that's what producers do. But we that was kind of one of those things where I was like, hey, it's really cool that he sang this song through the phone from prison. Uh, And, you know, and then Joe's like, wait a minute. So, like, did they write this? Like, was it a song they already knew and he just sang it? Or, like, did they did he just sing something and then they wrote it around him? That was like. We went on for like 10 minutes about that, like trying to figure out like how that, what the logistics were of that. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, and yeah, so Lance, Lance had all the sweet info on that. Uh, after that episode, I really wish that I, I, I wish that I had been more into bad brains uh, than, than I was going into it. Cause I, I kind of didn't know what to expect at first and was very uh, pleasantly surprised. Bad brains is one of those bands, man. It leads to everyone that you love in punk rock, hard rock, and apparently reggae, because that's a thing that Bad Brains does sometimes. Speaking of unexpected surprises, Cyclone 9, am I right? So, Dan, tell me about Cyclone 9 in your own words. Cyclone 9 is a... Uh, let's use let's use Jeff's terminology. I'm going to not use my own words. Uh, they are an industrial metal band or an agrotech band uh, with black metal vocals. They, they, they have the black metal tag, but like in my opinion... Yeah, like Dark Throne, this is not. So uh, I can't necessarily say it's black metal other than the uh, vocals themselves. Although, I don't know. They, they do get pretty um, <clears throat> aggro uh, as time goes on. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, th- this band is all over the place musically. And uh, and I, I love that. I like, I like that they, number one, have been around for such a long time. I mean, they've been around since 1999. They are based out of San Francisco, California. And uh, they have... They had quite. The, they've they've had quite the discography since then. And as normal, I have to put my disclaimer uh, on this. We are only talking about full length studio albums uh, on this episode, and I'm going to ignore the remix albums, and I'm going to ignore the demos, singles, and EPs. Which as there was plenty usual. of. There's plenty yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tell you what. I uh, always thought that I didn't realize these guys were in San Fran. I always thought that they were a German band for whatever reason. Have you heard the real- German Bond, Jeff? <laughs> 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 yeah, it's it's because they were originally signed to a German label. So I guess that's the reason why I always thought that. Because they always had kind of that... Uh, I don't know. I mean, the meme is just YouTube videos like eons old. But you had like those goth, like techno dance videos. 
and I swear to God that they they were dancing to Cyclone Nine in, in all of them because that's what I think of, especially the first two albums. That's what I was ended up doing. Like when I'm listening to this, I'm like, oh, I'm at a German rave. <laughs> at least what I think a German rave is in my mind. It's in Jeff's opinion, very, very what a German rave is. They're shitting on each other's chest. With close Dude, you've got to stop talking about excrement on chests. Like, <laughs> I don't know what's gotten into you tonight, but, you know, little peek behind the curtain, kids. We may have just done a, done a different oh. episode where he mentioned that exact thing. <laughs> I, I want to start. A- but we know that it's just I, a tonight thing and we can't really get <laughs> we can't wrap our heads around why it keeps coming up. So uh, we'll I want to start a new metal band and I want to call it Hot Carl. <laughs> that's that's what it is. That's that's my metal band is Hot Carl. Get out All of right. my house. <laughs> 2003 Divine Infect. We all deserve a life in hell. Dude, this album like totally messed me up the first time I heard it. And it was mainly because it's so thin, it's so bright, and it's so obnoxious, you know, that it just, I, I kind of was like, okay, if this is what we're going to get the whole time, this is just, um, this, I'm going to have some trouble because <laughs> it was really bad, in my opinion. I think it's awful. Oh, you didn't like this first album, huh? No, no, no. I did not care for really? Divine Infect at all. At all. It is just screeching in my ears. And I was like, nah, this is not my thing at all. Did somebody say screeching? Because that's what I like to hear. Uh, <laughs> so funny story. I, I Normally, I, normally I don't do this. I, I usually, where, where I work, I usually have to like physically be present in, in the office. Uh, but on... This past week, I actually ended up working from home a couple of days, like taking the work laptop home and clocking in for my for my battle station here. And uh, I was like, we were doing like some data entry stuff on the computer. And so like I knew that like, OK, the data entry stuff's going to be um, tedious. I'm not going to be able to stay awake while I'm doing this. So I popped on some Cyclone 9 <laughs> and uh, put on some Divine Infect. And uh, it's exactly what I needed to keep me like grounded and awake. It was like fun and dancey. I'm like, I'm like bopping the head back and forth whenever I'm, uh, whenever I'm typing in. You know, it was just basically a lot of control V, a lot of control C. This is definitely what you play at very loud volumes in, for very long periods of time to make it where people don't sleep. And yeah, ten time. hours, ten hours. Also, yeah. when glow sticks are in effect. <laughs> yeah, so many glow sticks. I got, yeah, I got all my RGB. You know, I can have my own little rave here in my chair. Yeah, and, this shit uh, gets played at Gitmo. <laughs> but it was so cool, man. Like, like, okay, I'm not normally into this, like, it, like, dancey sort of, sort of stuff. And so I was a little taken aback by it at first. But honestly, I mean, with the black metal vocals keeping me engaged, you know, and they're not even I don't know if they are black metal vocals or not. They're close enough. It's fine. They're they're heavily distorted. But like, it's funny because when for whatever reason, I thought this band was going to sound like Marilyn Manson, you know, or, or like something like that. There's a few and places they are. Yeah, there's definitely an influence <laughs> there for sure. But uh, yeah, so I thought it was going to be like in, in that sort of territory. So I was like pleasantly surprised that like okay you guys are going to give me enough you guys are going to give me enough uh extreme metal for me to be all like okay even though there's not really any extreme metal it was just extreme vocals but i don't know i liked it i liked all the beeps and boops and the, the the danceable beat and just i don't know man it kept me really really engaged so uh yeah it might be trash you know but it's trash actively yeah but it was enjoyable trash i like who doesn't like going outside and sifting through somebody's garbage every now and again yeah, so the vocals for me was just like somebody took Dan from Zayo's vocals, pitch shifted it up, and distorted the fuck out of it. And that's what these vocals were for me. Oh, so the fear is what keeps us here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but that's kind of what I got of it. And that was the initial draw for me on uh, Divine. In-, in fact, was because I didn't really, like I said, I didn't care for it musically that much. But vocally, the... Uh, I like kind of how fucked up the vocals are on this uh, a lot, actually. But musically, it just did not capture anything for me. But I I stayed for the vocals. That was about it. It's a dance type industrial record with really harsh, screechy vocals. 
I don't think this is unique as it is when we're listening to this band. I feel like I've heard this before a thousand times, but for some reason when I'm listening to Cyclone 9, I had a really good time this week. I wasn't on board at the start. This one, it dragged on a little bit for me. I had to find some things to do while the beat constantly was bouncing on my brain. But later on, you get used to it, and it becomes a little more extreme, and I think that's where this band is going to shine, what they turn into versus what they were in 2003. Yeah, right now they're a caterpillar. 2005, Inri. Oh, man. Okay, so this one was an interesting step in the right direction. Uh, you know, I, I was joking on the uh, on the Stabbing Westward, uh, you know, oh, well, it's not so goth that they're like, oh, my God, guys, we're vampires. This album is very like, oh my god, guys, we're vampires. Hey guys. <laughs> you know, like, and and I love it though because it's like it's kind of it like it's dark and evil or whatever in like this cheesy sort of sort of way, right? Like, and I like that about it. It, it kind of reminds me of like mushroom head levels of cheese in places, but like more serious than that. Like, if that makes sense. Like, um, I don't know. I like that this had like a darker atmosphere and that they're kind of starting to go more goth. Have have these like epic like sweeping like orchestral sounding keyboards and and all of that but then you've still got the band that made the last record so like there's still a lot of there's still a lot of that in there as well yeah i got this as if juggalos were vampires this is what you'd get why does it all of a sudden become dance beats if it's juggalos becoming vampires juggalo vampires would be an amazing mo- movie to go see i would go see that <laughs> i would go see that right now like violent jay shaggy are you listening big no, money I, hustlers is due for a return juggalo vampires a thing yeah yeah you know well because you know icp is kind of cheesy you know at times oh okay most of the time but that's kind of what I got out of this is this was cheese, but the people who l- like it are obsessed with it. That's kind of what I, the feeling that I got from this. The one thing I will say is that uh, I love <laughs> the I love the alternate uh, uh, cover of Enry. I thought that was <laughs> I thought that was like cheese supreme, and it's it's so cheesy. It's good kind of way. I can see why Dan I, thought this was going to be Marilyn Manson meets vampires. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, especially if you look at that alt cover, you're like, oh my God, really? And I'm like, yes, really. And I'm okay with it. Uh, but yeah, it's still kind of more of the same for me. This is, you know, not super high on my list. Uh, it's better than Divine Infect. But for me personally, that's not saying a ton. Still like the vocals, but that's all I'm coming here for right now is the vocals. One of the first things I notice about this band starts on this record. The first record, okay, they put a record out. It had a dance beat. Great, move on. One of the things about this scene that I either love or hate is when your dance genre band has too much dance and not enough melody. This record, it feels like there are dynamics in the mix. You don't have to crank the record to get all the nuance that really is a couple synths, a downbeat, and these shrieking Alvin and the Chipmunks black metal vocals going on. It kind of works in that mid to late 90s new wave influenced way where, yeah, it's a dance beat and there's zero dynamics in those sounds, But the way the album is put together, it's more interesting to listen to than something that's just four on the floor, doom, 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 and then we move on. Right. I mean, that was the first record, you know. (laughs) I mean, it really was in a lot of ways. And this one just, like, really shows them, you know, starting to spread their wings a little bit if we're going to keep going with the Caterpillar thing. Um, (laughs) But, yeah, I really really enjoyed this one. I thought it was a good step in the right direction. Um, It kept me awake when I was copying and pasting a lot, (laughs) you know. And, um, yeah, I I mean, honestly, I I thought this was amazing. Not amazing. I don't know. Amazing is not the right word, but I thought that this was very enjoyable. But don't worry. It will get amazing. Yeah, it's in the we're in past the caterpillar larva stage. We're at a we're a pupa right now. And we're about ready to become a beautiful butterfly. And with uh by beautiful butterfly, I mean down tuned fucking awesomeness that is crowned by fornicator. Two thousand six. 
This one is a step in multiple good directions for your industrial dance influenced band. This is where I stopped expecting this to be better than Combi Christ. And don't get me wrong, I love Combi Christ sometimes. And I started turning my head towards Rammstein because when you say industrial dance metal or just dance metal, I think Rammstein first. And this pushed a lot of the right buttons for that sound, in my opinion. Yeah, this is a lot less of the agrotech. I mean, the first two albums are very good examples of agrotech. Uh, this is more just straight up heavy, dark industrial music with, you know, a beat. I mean, that's really what this is. This, this is the shit. This is when I was like, oh my gosh, okay. Maybe I'm not going to be bitching about the every album that they come out with because I did not truthfully care too much for the first two. I was there for the vocals and nothing else. But Crown Life Fornicator is a fucking jam. I mean, they just get down and dirty, you know, and they're keeping the beat aspect of it. Yes, but there's this whole new side that I was not expecting. This was such a pleasant surprise for me. And uh, I'm guessing this is more of why this was recommended to us, because this is like my cup of tea. I could listen to this album and music like it on a regular basis and be super happy. Yeah, I mean, you've got songs on here like Scar of the Deceiver, which is like almost a straight black metal uh, sort of sort of song. And it's weird. This has to be jarring if you love the first two records. It wasn't for me. It was more like, hey, Dan, I noticed that you're, you know, liking a whole lot of that peanut butter. Would you like some jelly to go along with that? I think that would be really good. It's going to be crunchy jelly, whatever crunchy. Je you know, I don't don't look up crunchy jelly. Don't don't look that up. Strawberry. But, uh, <laughs> strawberry. Like, yeah, it's jelly with Captain Crunch thrown into it. Right. Let's just say that. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Like it really, it blew my mind that they would go this metal so quickly. It's a pretty abrupt shift. Like, sure. The last album was heavier than the first. Or no, it was darker than the first album. But I, I don't know. Do you think it was because this band just got lumped in with metal so much anyway that they decided to just lean into it? I don't know the answer. I would not say they're lumped in with metal bands. Fans of this genre don't really care how heavy your band is as long as you've got a serious dance beat going on. To me, it just sounds like they wanted to create something darker, like they were leaning into what was coming in a couple of years, trying to get that idea in your head of this band is one of the dark, gothy sounding bands. And no, I did not say goth bands. I said gothy, gothic, Transylvania, not the cure. We're talking with some actual Dracula shit going on right here. <laughs> um, you know, no, I mean, I, and I see that, but I like, it's so extreme, right? Because like, I'm just going to say it. A lot of bands that, a, a lot of bands that come from this background, if they're going to go metal, they're going to go new metal. Right. Right. Uh, you yeah, know, I, 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 like I don't, you know, part of, you know, a new metal is how you approach it vocally and lyrically as well. Well, grin. I don't know what the dude says 95% of the time, and I'm fucking cool with that because I don't really care about lyrics. Agreed. But, but in vocally, this case. yeah. But vocally, I mean, there's just, he's so far, you know, separated from new metal. I, I, I just, he, he, he would have had to, you know, change the style so much to be considered part of that, um, you know, that genre. It, this is just, uh, for me, is just straight up taking uh industrial and putting it a little bit with dark wave is really what it is this is more of you know trying to blend the two and walk the fine line uh, because i don't think it's uh really rooted in you know more in one than the, than the other i th i think this is this is just straight up dope i i love this stuff man did and somebody say I dope would, Yes, and we're not talking about Edsel. Not, not on my show, you didn't. <laughs> it is way more than what I was anticipating, and 
way more enjoyable than what I was expecting. And I was listening. Generally, the way I do it, I tend to listen to two bands simultaneously just so I don't get jaded. So I was listening to this and one of my favorite uh, bands from the 90s, Stabbing Westward. And I was alternating between the two. And I found myself shockingly gravitating more towards Cyclone 9, which I was not expecting. And damn, is it good? It's really, really good. And uh, I strongly recommend anybody who likes, you know, a little bit of electronica in their metal, like a beat to their metal. And I'm not talking like groove metal. I'm just talking about actually having talking about blast beats. Yeah, uh, dude, this was fucking great. Start here. Way better than I expected. Yeah, I second that, Joe. I would say definitely start here. Uh, the first two records, it's like you have to be in a special circumstance if you're a metal fan to like really appreciate that. But starting here is like the best entry point uh, for this band because you're going to get a lot of what you like with a whole bunch of those other influences that maybe maybe you're here for to like learn more about. Yeah, I would agree with that as well. Uh, wholeheartedly, I- I'd skip the first two and jump jump in right here. 2009, We the Fallen. Okay, straight up vampires. <laughs> I was not going there. <laughs> well, you know what? I I like myself a good vampire flick, a good vampire novel. So maybe that's why this is my favorite album of theirs. I don't know. It's this just a, it's just great. Richter Belmont being crucified on it. No, anyway. Uh Lestat yeah. or Louis, Jeff. Come on. I, I'm sorry for all the vampire jokes. I, I am. I don't, but it it is funny. Um, we like vampires on this show as long as they don't sparkle. Yeah, well, I like the morbidity of of, Lu- of Louis, so because he's <laughs> he's just a self loathing son of a bitch. So, uh, yeah, this this shit's great, man. Yeah, I this mean, one it gets gets better, more aggressive. Yeah, yeah, this was. I mean, it's it's like they completely forgot what they were before and uh, just completely took on a, this whole new persona, and I love it. And I was reading about how like this is all about like the like a parasitic perspective, uh, as if uh, the lead singer was a paras- uh, parasite, a heartworm. And I was like, that's kind of sick, twisted, and I like it uh, a lot. <laughs> it's kind of accurate like too, depending on your perspective. Yeah, <laughs> it kind of like uh, finds its way into like ev- you know everything else in your day. Like I, I really, really, really liked this, and I just was like, okay, I gotta. I it's in an odd way. He's saying a heartworm. For me, it's an earworm. I mean, I just can't, I couldn't get this fucking album. I couldn't put it down. Yeah, I, I mean, really, don't absolutely do not listen to this for like love advice because <laughs> it's like about like social parasites, <laughs> you know. Uh, too. This is. I mean, oh my god, the song Widowmaker. Oh, that's that's is really exactly. Good shit what it says on the cover it's even got brandon chapetti of bleeding through on it which is another one of my favorite bands that i put in the category of has keyboards um but yeah i mean they're even had like there's like brutal like like breakdown type stuff going on in this record and this is the record where i was like are they trying to like appeal to just me like because i'm starting to i'm starting to feel that like this is this is almost less like quote-unquote black metal sounding and more like just trying to be heavy just like in your face heavy but then also outrageously creepy at the same time yeah as i was gonna say the other thing too is that the the tracking and mixing and the production uh was done by uh jason miller of godhead which we did in years past which i re- had recommended that in dan that one kind of i know you kind of took hold on on that one but yeah the, so we i mean godhead? i don't think we did godhead i swear to god we did godhead it's been like 200 something episodes. <laughs> Somebody let us know. Did we do a Godhead episode? <laughs> I swore to God we did Godhead. Maybe we didn't. I, I swore we did. Anyway, I love Godhead. So therefore, it makes sense on why I would enjoy uh, Cyclone 9 with that more of that industrial uh, gothic feel. For the so, record, yeah. Jeff is thinking of God Flesh. Well, I like God Flesh too. Yeah, they're both good. Oh my God. Street Cleaner by God Flesh. 27 minutes later. Um, yeah. Um, oh God, God flesh is so good. Anyway, um, I gotta, I gotta get off of this. Um, he shared the episode, the dude from, from God flesh. Anyway, uh, <laughs> share the episodes. Yeah. This record is just absolutely a, a punch in the face. Like it is the last record was good. Like, don't get me wrong. It was definitely like Joe said, like the starting point, but this is like, if you loved that, then you're going to be in good company for the next, uh, 
you know, for the next few releases. With Scott Bowling? With or without Scott Bowling. Oh, okay. This one sounds like the programmed version of what Author and Punisher sounds like. And I think that's really cool. It has that deep, punching, industrial, double bass sound. Not unlike Circle of Dust or Clank, which we've talked about in the past. But then the guitars find their way into the epic sounding keyboards it might be my favorite soundscape in industrial dark the opposite of hope and then mix in your metal guitars and your dance beat for this band on this record the shrieking vocals are just a bonus yeah and oh i also i just want to throw in just because um he's been sharing a lot of it lately i i I totally forgot that uh, Thomas dropped Patrici from uh, Cybreed, did a, a lot of production work and a lot of remixes for uh, on uh, Circle of Dust and a lot of stuff with Clayton. So I just figured I'd throw that in there too because it just kind of put me on a tangent and I figured I'd throw that in because I love Cybreed and Circle of Dust. Perfect. Yeah, I'll check that out. That's news to me. Yeah. I meant to say that years ago and I, I always forgot and I just he just started sharing that again and I was like, Oh, you know what? I need to I need to mention that because this is the place to say it. Are we ready? The order of the shadow. Yeah, one last Act thing. One. Besides Widowmaker, Suicide Note Lullaby. I, I dug. Gotta I have I have to throw that out. Sorry. It's a goodie. Yep. Two thousand and thirteen. Oh man, you guys know I hate it whenever an album's called anything Act One, right? Like I think I talked about that already, but like uh, this was my album of the week, uh, like I think a week ago, and um, yeah, this is this is hands down my favorite of everything that he's done um, for a lot of the same reasons that I like the previous, you know, that I like the previous two. Um, but this just takes on a completely disgusting sound. Like I mean, the like the 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 real opener, not the intro. Shadows Unveiled is like some of the fastest like breakbeat aggressive screaming vocal I've ever heard and it is just relentless. Yeah, it's straight up sick. And and I agree. I was just like it came out of the out of the shoots firing. I tend to not pay too close attention on like uh, most intros unless it's like a, uh, a a prog metal band. That's about the only time I really pay attention to intros. So I'm I'm totally right there with you. Shadows Unveiled was just brutal as fuck and cool. <laughs> I, I loved uh, every b- minute of it order of the shadow i love that too so yeah this was a great album I, it's kind of like i almost want to have a 1a and 1b because the order of the shadow act one is is right up there with uh with we the fallen for me are the vocals pitched higher on this one i mean i didn't really notice that if they are I, honestly i think the vocal delivery is the only thing that hasn't changed <laughs> really uh in in all of the albums but this definitely sounds more evil if there's a if that's a good way to describe it yeah it, and joe i think you're right uh, on this and icon of the adversary i do think they've been pitched up a little bit i think it's more prominent on uh icon of the adversary but yeah they, they, there's something going on there that where they've tweaked the the distortion of some sort i but i like it i it, it fits uh, I like the aggressiveness of it. That's the one thing that I think has been, for the most part, you know, the constant that has kept me coming back until musically it started changing into something that uh, was more personally agreeable. Uh, because Agritech's just really not my my thing. Uh, it, it's hard. that that's that part of their uh, discography is just a little tough for me. But yeah, this is this is my jam. I mean, this shit was great, and uh, it's just a pleasant surprise. I'm glad this got recommended to us because uh, I'm in love. <laughs> I love the direct, connected, overly distorted industrial guitar sound mixed with the insane double bass drumming that. I would be making fun of if this was a grindcore band. Very blatantly programmed. But with those shrieking over-the-top vocals, you have a toned-down grindcore project more than an industrial metal project, and it works because it's not making noise for the sake of making noise. He's still creating a soundscape that doesn't abandon the industrial has opened the door for the grind now i'm interested to see where the band is going because this was 2013 2018 will be coming very soon and who knows what the next record is going to sound like but we're not quite there yet 
Yeah, I mean, it's just dirty. It's so much dirtier than what we've had before because I feel like everything else was like kind of more uh, meant to sound like, like I don't know, the, like there was a melody that was supposed to counteract, I guess, kind of the extremity of the vocals and, and that sort of thing. I mean, they had definitely had heavier parts, like slammier moments, but this is just like, you know, we, we talked about Godflesh a second ago. This was kind of what I liked about Godflesh was that it was so like gritty sounding, but this is like times 50, right? Like this is like, like sped up. <laughs> Uh, quite a bit and so yeah the way this thing kind of blasts is it's profound to me i i love it yeah it's um i i think after uh oh gosh what's their second album i'm having a total brain fart Henry. on Henry. that's it that's whenever they they got rid of that that thin high-pitched uh super trebly type of sound and they just got dirtier and darker and richer in more earthy with the, and I think that's what works better with the contrast of the vocals. I think the two working together or, or you know, contrasting is what works well together. And I, I love it. And this is like a 1A and a 1B for me. So I, I am, I'm on board 100%. Are you ready for 2018 when Icon of the Adversary is released? Well, it's interesting because I know that Order of the Shadow was supposed to be like the last hurrah, right? It was supposed to be the last album. And now what we have more is like, instead of it being the last album, it became, it was a trilogy, I guess, of yeah. albums. And um, as a part two, man, like I, I got nothing negative or I've got nothing negative or shitty to say about this. This is, um, I, I don't even know how to describe it. I just really love it. It's dark. It's angry. It's evil sounding. Uh, it's everything I like out of a good metal album. When this band is like two parts, not metal. <laughs> to me, this is the next step for a band that started with dance beats in the early 2000s. If you play that style, you're always going to have an audience because those groups will always get together. That's never going to end. But how do you push that sound forward? It's Industrial December. You can go back and do what Trent Reznor has perfected, or you can try to create something with a different kind of atmosphere. This record really abandons the beat and is leaning more on the how the soundscape makes you feel not even what the songs are about or how they build on your emotions it's like they're tapping into the physiological effects of what the sounds are like if jeff had a really good sound system he would feel like garbage just listening to this record and that's the i do point. have a good sound yeah, as I say, I do have a good sound system, and I did feel like garbage, and it felt great. <laughs> Same. I also have a good sound system that Jeff helped me set up. I so, have yeah, two uh, good sound systems, so I win the argument. I, there's no argument. I think we all collectively felt like garbage listening oh, to this. I was going to say, how, good how, job, you have, guys. You have two good sound systems? That's it? Well, I didn't want to count the studio. I've just got the one. I mean... <laughs> is what it is the one thing i think he said was that you know anything he has coming out uh moving forward was supposed to essentially be like a uh an extension so i mean it's a, it, it makes sense that that uh you know icon of the adversary is part two because he he said order the shadow act one he goes that's just going to be like anything i i come out with after this is just going to be an extension and, and this was you know some pretty dark shit and there's actually some spots that on this one you can actually um there's different vocals in this as well which i i found was interesting uh that i wasn't expecting uh some some lower pitch stuff and some spoken word that you can actually understand which you know i dug i mean because musically it's part of what i've been enjoying uh from cyclone 9 you know for the past what 15 years now or whatever it is that this is they've been going on since they kind of changed yeah since 2006 so yeah 15 years of what i like from them and that's 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 one of the good things is whenever since we tend to have everything compressed uh especially if it's an album that's or uh, not an album but an artist that's recommended to us and that's because we have uh to listen to you know 15 20 sometimes 30 years you know in a, a week or two or a month and uh it didn't get boring 
and that's probably one of the best compliments that we can pay a band uh, in the way that we listen to to new music, uh, music that is new to us that has been out for an extended period of time. Uh, it did not get boring. Uh, it did not get less enjoyable. Uh, the more we listened to it, at least for me, the more I liked it and uh, the more I wanted to listen to it again. And like I said, I was listening to this and to Stabbing Westward at the same time. And at first I thought it might have been, well, the reason why I'm listening to more of Cyclone 9 than Stabbing Westward is because I've heard all the Stabbing Westward stuff many a time before because I enjoy them. And I started realizing, no, it's because I'm actually think I might like collectively Cyclone 9 more than I'm liking Stabbing Westward. And I have two of Stabbing Westward's albums in my top 25 of all time for industrial rock. So that should tell you something right there. Is that your final thought, Jeff? Uh, it might be. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a pretty succinct uh, final thought, if it is one. Dan, what about you? Final thoughts on Cyclone 9. I mean, this was just awesome. This was this was completely out of left field for me. And I, uh, I, I really, I clung to it in a way that I don't think, like, I don't know. I gave this band a chance the way I, in a way, I don't think that I usually give bands a chance. Like, I always go into it thinking like, God, this is just going to be a whole bunch of work. You know what I mean? Or, or like. If this band was good, I would already heard of them by now. You know, like all the dumb things. That's actually what the inside of my brain sounds like is most of the time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, this band was incredible. And I really appreciated their their slant towards extreme metal for the second half of their career. Uh, that solidified them to me as a band that can play a variety of different styles and play them well. And um, I think if you were into industrial music or even just extreme metal, I think you would not go wrong listening to, at, at the very least, the last four albums by this band. Industrial December is off to the right start. We kicked off the month with Stabbing Westward, an example of everything mainstream industrial. Now you get Cyclone 9, a band that starts off on the dance side of industrial metal. And now the band has done a complete 360 turn and come back to everything that extreme industrial metal sounds like to me. When they program double bass, it's intentional. It has the grind vibe. We're trying to make everyone uncomfortable and provide that emotional onslaught. Because now the band isn't trying to entertain you and give you some dark ideas. They're actually putting you into a dark sounding atmosphere and making you feel uncomfortable. I think that's one of the most interesting things about this type of industrial metal. It's extreme in its own way. It's still heavy, but it's not grindcore making noise for the sake of it. I think Cyclone 9 was an interesting find for us. I'm thankful for the recommendation. Kyle Driver, shout out to you. And I'm going to be listening to Cyclone 9 for quite a while, guys. So I think you should be listening to Cyclone 9. Damn, what's your album of the week? Well, it's popped up a few times, so I'm only going to use it probably this last time. But it still still sucks by Limp Biscuit. <laughs> hey, man, it jams. Jeff, what about you? I went back in the Wayback Machine to an album that I've recommended, I think, the first time that we did Industrial December. And that is the album Circular Line by Chlorophyll. For me, it's This Time of Year by Project 86. When Christmas is near and the misfit toys have to sing their dirgy, industrial-sounding songs. Wait until you hear Carol the Bell Towers. <laughs> Take us out, DFT. If you guys like this podcast and you would like to reach out to us in any way, shape, or form, there's a lot of ways you could do that. You can send us an email at show at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash discography discussion you can find us on twitter at discuss metal and on instagram at discuss metal you can find us on youtube at discuss metal dan and uh you can also join us on our discord server there'll be a link in the show notes that'll take you to our discord server where we are chatting and hanging out pretty much all the time even if you're asleep we're still hanging out so uh come hang out with us there thank you guys so much for checking out this episode industrial december keeps cruising along and we will see you guys next week and on that note, this has been episode 251 of Discography Discussion. Thank you for listening. 
You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Discuss Metal. Subscribe to our podcast everywhere you listen to podcasts, including Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and Stitcher. Visit DiscussMetal.com for all things discography discussion. And please send questions and comments to Dan and Joe Show at gmail.com. If you are not a patron, you can become one at patreon.com forward slash discuss metal. We have some sweet perks. Give me your money now. One dollar a month gets you into that exclusive album review feed. The future's not so bright. The only chance is not to waste your life. Half open, have no fear. The truth walks by your side.